What's going on guys, Dan and Sally, and yeah, this is a camera that is probably gonna be the best camera that you can get under $3,000 right now, but there are a few disclaimers, especially if you're a videographer, but I know you're a photographer, so probably mostly good things to say. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to talk about this camera. Obviously, autofocus performance coming out of this camera, it's Sony, so it's amazing, as well as high-res image quality. That part is my favorite part to talk about because what I have seen so far is incredible, and so many other strengths really put into this camera compared to its competition. Yeah, now if you do happen to have one of the older cameras, I will say it's a pretty big price jump from that. So a little harder to justify. And there are a couple things that I was kind of hoping would be in a camera of this price range, but overall, absolutely amazing. And again, this is just the beginning. We got a ton of comparisons on this, so coming out soon. Also a full menu help guide to go over the, spoiler alert, brand new menu system yeah. inside of this camera. So stay tuned for that. We'll help you get it set up and everything like that. So check us out on IG too. We got BTS of all the stuff we've been talking about and going over with all these shoots. But this is the Sony a74. So basically everything on this camera is new. We have brand new hardware on it, a brand new sensor, a processor from the Sony A1, and virtually every aspect of this camera, including like the autofocus system and everything like that has been changed. The interface and customization are also getting some pretty big upgrades. So literally every aspect of this camera. But let's get into some hardware things first because quite a bit has changed, even though it looks very similar to a lot of other cameras. Yeah, absolutely. So the buttons have changed quite a bit. They feel better. To me, it feels a lot better than the a7 III. It feels more expensive and that is what I like. It's an upgrade to me. Um, as well as grip feels better. I mean, obviously here, we this is the closest we have found to the Sony a7S III grip and it's a massive upgrade from the Sony a7 III. Screen is higher resolution as well as the viewfinder is an upgrade in resolution which is a huge deal and then we're getting 120 frames per second. One of the biggest things to me that I actually ended up loving during our photo shoot because they only sent us one a7 IV but that's okay now because there is a mode dial on the bottom added where you can switch between photo, video, and SQ mode, and I get three customizations on video. He gets three customizations, and I love that. Before, you kind of only had three to share, and I don't like sharing, so <laughs> I think that's a huge upgrade. Yeah, and it was just so easy to switch between them, and even having the S and Q with custom modes there was really nice, because I had one set up for uh, time lapses and one for slow motion, so really easy to get through that. And then also, the exposure compensation dial is now just blank. It's basically the same dial, but it's blank, so you can customize that in the setting. So yeah, everything on the hardware, very similar looking, but the functionality is quite a bit different. So one thing I do all the time is a low to the ground vertical shot, and I'm always on the floor to get that shot. But now I have a flip screen. So thankfully, since the uh, a7 III, I can now pull this shot off perfectly. So you do have dual card slots just like before. They have been upgraded to UHS-2, so faster card slots on that one. Now the big thing is that one of these card slots is also a CF Express Type A card, which we've seen on cameras like the A1 and the S3, which is really good. Now first, I was kind of a little bit bummed that they didn't have both slots as a CF Express, but pretty much every function of the camera for photo and video and everything else can run just off of uh, SD cards, UHS-2 SD cards. So that was pretty good. However, there was a little bit of an issue with the buffer on it. Yeah, we were taken aback a little bit. We were photographing the model on the beach and as she was walking towards us, I mean, the buffer was filling pretty quickly, yeah. very fast as she was walking. So if you are using UHS-2 slots, and we, we were actually using Sony's Tough Cards, which are very fast, mm -hmm. and those still were filling the buffer up in RAW plus JPEG in about 20 frames. It was ridiculously yeah. quick that you were filling it up. However, CF Express Type A, I was shooting hundreds of images in RAW plus JPEG with absolutely no issues. 
issues. So mm -hmm. if you are somebody who needs fast frame rates, you will actually really want that CF Express card. So, but another hardware feature that has been pulled from the A1, which is an incredible camera in of itself, you can now have the shutter closed. So, da 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 da. Wait, look at the inside. Yay! I'm really excited for this because I do happen to shoot on the beach a lot. We live in Florida. Yeah. So I don't want any dust on my sensor. I want sand on my sensor, especially. And even when I'm shooting a wedding, you know, we're quick changing lenses. I it can it can get windy or whatever doing an elopement on a mountain. So I love this feature. It's a massive upgrade for me. I think it's a huge advantage. I know a couple of people have said, oh, well, your your shutter is actually exposed. You can actually turn this completely off in the menu system. So if you don't like it and you want your sensor exposed when you take off the lens, you can do that. But if you're someone like me and is scared a lot about dust on the sensor, which can ruin a video clip completely, you do have the option to actually have the shutter cover it and not worry at all about it. So let's talk about menu system. And obviously there is a brand new menu system that we talked about on this camera. And this menu system, if you're already a Sony user, you're not even going to be used to this customization yet. It is incredible. And I think Sony did a really good job. Yeah, there are features on this that are not in like the S3 and A1. Yeah. I have not seen a lot of these features are brand new for this. Even the function dial, when you go ahead and hit that, you can bring up things like frame rates and codecs and other things that you couldn't on a lot of those cameras. So if you're someone who likes to customize it, it is extremely customizable. However, it's a bit more daunting. The new yes. menu system, while a little bit easier to use, has so many settings that uh, it will take a little bit of time to learn, but that's what help guides are for. So you can check that out that's as right. well. But yeah, customization on this camera, definitely a positive. So this is the my favorite part to talk about. This is an incredible camera when it comes to image quality. And obviously we have a brand new sensor and zooming in at 100% is the most beautifully crisp mm -hmm. images. Yeah. I even showed him, I was like, I, I stopped in my tracks editing these photos and I was like, Dan, you gotta come look at this. This, this is a lot coming from her. <laughs> it's a lot because I require a lot. And obviously Sony lenses are great too paired along with this camera, but this camera's quality for the price it is and and what it is, is absolutely amazing. Now we have backside illuminated, new color science. This was big to me because I've never loved Sony color science. And I know I'll probably get hate in the comments for that, but it is what it is. I never really liked it. And it has so improved. I even compared it to my Canon R6 and I found that I enjoyed these colors a little bit better. And we have 33 megapixels, which is huge. Yeah. As a wedding photographer, my clients love to print their images large. And if you do pixel peeping or you want to edit skin, for retouching, um, the file size is not horrible, which is also a huge deal. You're not filling yeah, up a ton a of hard drives. Between all of them. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk quality. Yeah. So the bonus with having all those megapixels is that you can actually use an APS-C crop mode and you yes. have decent resolution on that. So that's mm -hmm. a little bit of bonus. Now, what really surprised me is low light. So this is a larger resolution sensor, which is typically worse in low light. However, I'm just not seeing it here. I mean, images look great up to about 6,400 ISO. After that, I'm seeing a little bit of a color shift at 12,000 ISO, but honestly, these images are still perfectly usable. We also have a few new raw types on here. So you can shoot on compressed raw, compressed raw, or the new lossless compressed. And that's all well and good. However, do keep in mind that if you're shooting faster frame rates, things are gonna differ up a little bit. So if you wanna shoot 10 frames per second, which the camera can shoot, that is only going to be in compressed raw. If you wanna be able to shoot uncompressed or mm -hmm lossless compressed, it will slow things down a little bit. This is pretty much par for the course, what we saw with the other camera. I did kind of hope that with this price increase, we might've seen a little bit faster shooting on it. However, we are getting the resolution jump. So yes. I guess that's a that's a pretty good compromise. Absolutely, that's the biggest deal to me. I mean, again, zooming in at 100%, you, you can't get better. Yeah. I am definitely getting this camera, just so Dan knows. Another thing though that I did find as a downgrade from something maybe like the Canon R6, it's loud. Like, it's pretty loud. I yeah. shoot in very quiet environments all the time. I photograph newborns, I photograph weddings, and ceremonies, you know, obviously they're quiet. Catholic ceremonies, they don't like you to be loud. So that was a downgrade for me from the Canon R6, but again, it's a great image quality yeah, camera. Absolutely. But now it's my turn to take the a7 IV and put it to the test.
So autofocus two, a massive upgrade to autofocus. And that's pretty incredible because the a7 III was already one of the best cameras on the market. And that's despite it being like three years old. But yeah, yeah 759 autofocus points, basically covering the entire frame here. And you have all the newest algorithms on this thing. You have uh, IAF for humans that are picking up the eye much earlier. You have bird IAF, which is something that's brand new for this, animals. <laughs> and so yeah, tracking is full-time, autofocus tracking, real time, and overall performance is just absolutely amazing. It is, it was absolutely stunning because I shoot a lot of backlit portraits um, with the sun right behind my model. I enjoy that even though it's at the bane of Dan's existence. <laughs> I still do it and I love it. I love sunset. So it was not the easiest environment to shoot in and the autofocus was spot on with her moving back and forth everything it was always catching her eye. I know you even said that it caught her eyelash at one point. Yeah, and even the video performance was great on it when it comes to <laughs> autofocus. And so no matter what we were throwing at it, it was hitting it nonstop. Mm -hmm. Also, the touchscreen response is much better now than before. The a7 III, yeah. that was always a big weakness of it. So much better on that. And if you happen to use teleconverters, it will maintain all of these autofocus functions mm -hmm. using Sony's teleconverters. And it will even focus up to f 22. So basically any lens that you throw on it, even with a 2x teleconverter, you can get autofocus in photos and videos with this camera, which is pretty insane. So I have actually been crazy excited for this camera when it comes to video. I mean, I have been looking forward to this for years and the end result is absolute perfection except for one feature. And unfortunately it is a very big deal for me. And the problem is 4K60. And I shoot 4K60 a lot. Basically, anything that's not talking to the camera, I'm using 4K64. And I shoot it for B-roll, I shoot it for weddings, I shoot it for other paid projects. And so it is very important that I have it. And this camera does have it. However, it means that you have to go into a crop mode. There's no full frame 4K60 in this camera. There's a reason why, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But what it meant is that over the last couple of weeks that I've had this camera in my bag, I resorted to using other cameras that did have 4K60 because I needed it for projects and I never even used this camera. And that was so unfortunate for me because I really was looking forward to having this in my bag. And then when I finally do, I just ended up not using it that much. Now, thankfully, virtually everything else in this camera is absolutely stunning. So this has 33 megapixels, which amounts to about 7K for video. And the camera can actually oversample in 4K full frame 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second from that entire 7K sensor. So you're getting amazing quality video. Also the APS-C crop mode comes out to about 5K and the camera can actually oversample in that mode at every frame rate up to 60 frames per second. So I understand that Sony going for this higher resolution 33 megapixel sensor means that they cannot oversample in 4K 60 like the Canon R6 can do in full frame. However, I would have personally preferred a 24 megapixel sensor if they could have oversampled that to get 4K 60. However, Sony is also not giving us any none oversampled version of this. So any pixel bin version or just a slightly lower quality version of 4K, they are doing this in the Sony A1. They are doing this in the Sony A7R series. I don't know why they chose not to include any full frame 4K option in this. And it meant that any time that I was shooting uh, photos and then switching to video, I had to change lenses because my focal lengths were different. It meant that low light was not gonna be as good because you're not using the entire frame. And also the depth of field, you're just not gonna get the entire shallow depth of field that you would be used to on a full frame sensor. All right, so now that the rant is over, pretty much everything else in the camera is absolutely amazing. IAF in video is something that we didn't have with the a7 III and it works so amazingly well on this camera, it was insane. Also, you now have more customization than you've had in every camera. Actually, there's some things in this camera that I haven't even seen on my a7S III, which is pretty crazy. Plus, you have unlimited recording, so no more 30 minute record limit, which was annoying. Overheating also, and I haven't done a whole lot of tests with it, but I have recorded in some very hot environments in direct sunlight. I did start to get overheating warnings, but as soon as I threw the camera in the heat temperature mode set to high, it lets it record a little bit longer by letting the sensor warm up a bit more. I didn't have any issues. I could record another 25 minutes. So in total, I recorded about 50 minutes 
of 4K oversampled from 7K sensor in insanely hot outdoor environments, and the camera held up extremely well. We also have quite a few features from the Sony A7S III. So you're getting things like a full-size HDMI output, a more advanced image stabilization system that can actually record gyro data to the file for post stabilization. You can shoot 10 bit 422 or 420 in every resolution and every frame rate with S log 2, S log 3, and even S Cinetone made it to this camera, which is pretty amazing. Now, one thing is completely new to this camera is focus breathing compensation. So the camera will actually know what lens it's using and will crop in to compensate for any focus breathing. And this is a feature that works extremely well. And I use this kind of thing a whole lot because I'm doing some rack focusing and things like that a lot of times at weddings. So this made actually a pretty big difference. And it's a feature that so far is unique to the a7 IV. So even in low light, the camera was doing pretty well despite it having more resolution. It's definitely no a7S III. At 1600 ISO, I was definitely starting to see some grain creeping in. Right around 6400, it was pretty noticeable. And by 12,800, I think this is the most I would go on this camera, but still one of the better camera around. So definitely this is 100% my dream camera, whether you're a video shooter or just a hybrid shooter, with the exception that I'm really gonna be missing that 4K 60 full frame. So one feature this camera actually has that I'm a huge fan of, I get a lot of flicker, whether it's these kind of lights in the ceiling or like headlights on the car, and I can actually fine tune my shutter speed on this. It has variable shutter control, and you can get it to like a 10th of a second. So I'm gonna try, it's kind of hard to see on this little screen, but I'm gonna try and eliminate some of that flicker using that feature. Now something else that's completely new, and I'll probably use a whole lot in the future, but I haven't used it too much yet, the streaming options and tethering options with this camera, especially wireless, have gotten a whole lot better. So you have better Wi-Fi, you have better Bluetooth, you also have USB-C, 3.2 generation two. And this meant that a whole lot of transfer options were available to you and much faster than before. But a new big feature is the streaming option. So you can actually plug this camera, USB-C straight into your computer and use it for a webcam or any live streaming. And it works amazingly well, plus you get upgraded frame rates and resolution. So you can actually shoot up to 1080p 60 or 4K at 15 frames per second. Either one will work with this straight USB-C into the computer and you also get the option of internal recording while you're doing that. So some big upgrades overall and things that I'll definitely be using soon. Now, honestly, when the a7 III came out, there wasn't anything close to competition for that camera. Yeah. I'll never forget sitting in Vegas and Dan sitting next to me. Everything they said during the spec list was like, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. It was just an incomparable camera to any Anything coming out of Canon or Nikon and we were blown away now obviously with the a7 IV you have that higher resolution upgrade with Canon R6 we have 20 megapixels Nikon Z6 II 24 megapixels we have an almost 50% increase in resolution. That's astronomical to me, even if the price is a little bit steeper. Yeah, and it's doing all of that with some of the best autofocus technology <laughs> and a whole lot of extra stuff thrown yeah. in in terms of features. So that's pretty comparable. I think for video, it's, it's actually a little bit harder for me just because I use 4K60 so much and it lacks full frame 4K60 and having to go into the crop mode is just kind of disappointing. However, they are definitely doing features and a lot of other things including autofocus that other cameras are just not doing the customization having different codecs and 422 and 420 and all that kind of stuff is absolutely miles ahead of everybody else so as of right now Sony is still going to be the best in the market. So hands down, this camera is a huge win for Sony. They have done an incredible job making it live up to what it should have been. Yeah. And you know, with the upgrade from the a7 III from the megapixel count to 33 megapixels, I am blown away. It was a joy to edit these photos. And honestly, the autofocus on this camera is incredible because it's Sony. And I mean, I'm just blown away. Yeah, absolutely. I think that combination, even with the price increase, has started to justify it. I mean, even a week or two in, I was still finding features in the menu system. I was like, wow, that's brand new for the camera. So really cool on that one. I think for video, it's still, I kept coming back to 
there really isn't anything better than this. So even though I was still bummed about not having 4K 60 full frame, I just kept coming back to that, that fact and then having all the customization, the autofocus and everything else built into it, it was still becoming a win for me. But definitely let us know what you guys are thinking. Would you pick up this camera right here or should Sony have done something a little bit differently? Uh, we've got a ton of stuff, really cool stuff coming up. So stay tuned for that. Hope you guys are doing amazing. See you soon in a new video.